On the list of great benchmarks and mileposts along the path to get back to the college football regular season, few things are better than the release of the first depth chart. And, I mean, first press conference too, but let's be honest, the depth chart is far more interesting. Put Pitt released their first depth chart of the season yesterday. We're going to break it down, plus everything Pat Narduzzi had to say at his season opening press conference on today's Morning Pit, youtube.com slash panthelair.com. All right, we're up and rolling on a Tuesday morning on the Morning Pit, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. I'm Chris Peak from pantherlair.com. is the website, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com, the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. Everything you could possibly need is right there at panther-lair.com. Uh, not really sure why I said it that way, but sometimes I like to mix it up a little bit. You know our video channel right here, youtube.com slash pantalaircom, where we have all of our video content, pit-related. We've got this stuff that we do every day of the week, Monday through Friday in the morning pit, a little pit talk to get your day started. We have our weekly live show on Wednesday nights at 8.30 p.m. Uh, me and Jim Hammock get together to talk about pit sports for an hour or so with your comments and questions, plus we have practice interviews and highlights and post-game interviews and all kinds of things. Uh, lots of pit content to keep you interested. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash to never miss any of our exclusive pit video content. Uh, yesterday was the first Monday of the regular season for pit. That meant uh, Pat Narduzzi's first in-season press conference, which he did at noon, and then the release of the first depth chart. And you know, it would be nice if they would put the depth chart out at like 9 or 10 a.m. If they put the depth chart out at 9 or 10 a.m., we could sit down, we could write it about it at length and analyze it and all that kind of stuff leading up to Narduzzi's press conference at noon. But unfortunately, they wait and don't release it until like 11.55. So while you're trying to, uh, you know, pay attention during the press conference, you're also scanning the depth chart for anything interesting or notable that stands out. Um, it wasn't just about the depth chart yesterday, though. There was some news that came out pit-related, and and I mean that's somewhat <laughs> tied to the depth chart, uh, but it's definitely where we have to start today. And it's the news that Ryan Jacoby is out for the season with an injury, he suffered an injury during training camp, and uh, will miss the rest of the season. Jacoby's a redshirt senior this year, so he would have another year of eligibility regardless. He's got that COVID year of eligibility on the other side of this one, so he already had the option to come back for 2024. Um, could he get another, uh, year added another red shirt year that would depend on the NCAA who is unpredictable at best. I'm just going to check Jacoby's bio real quick and see if he missed another year because the, the, the rule, not the rule, the unspoken rule always was that he, uh, if a player misses two years, either two full seasons or most of two seasons or one whole season plus most of another, whatever it may be, then they were a good candidate to get that extra year of eligibility granted. Ryan Jacoby, it doesn't look like really had any injuries. He redshirted at Ohio State in 2019 and didn't play in 2020, transferred to Pitt in August of 2021. So if they wanted to um, make a case that he was injured at some point during the 2019 or 2020 seasons, and that uh, 2023 would then become his second full season missed to injury, then yeah, he would probably have the, op uh, you know, he would have a chance of getting a seventh year, you know, another year added on beyond 2024. Now, maybe the NCAA, perhaps it would be less likely to do that since he would have the COVID year. He already would have gotten six years on campus. It's disappointing for, uh, I mean, that's all down the road. Who knows? I mean, you presume, you assume at this point that he's going to come back for next year. So we can talk about that in a second. Um, who knows what's going to happen in 2025? Maybe college football won't exist or in a completely different form. Who knows? It's unfortunate for Jacoby because I, I mean, you talk about a guy who this, this is your year. Like this was going to be it. The coaches really liked what they saw from him in 2021. Um, they were impressed with how, I mean, he enrolled in August, picked up the playbook. By the end of the season, he had the playbook down. They were really impressed by how he mastered it and probably even earlier than the end of the season. And they were impressed with how he looked and how, how he played. And so he even got on the field a little bit in 2021, uh, the final three games of the year. He played in the Syracuse game. He played in the uh, ACC championship game. And he started the Michigan State game as an extra offensive lineman, which is where he saw most of his playing time last year, occasionally as a backup guard, but usually as a sixth offensive lineman playing as an inline tight end. Um, 
But it was all building up to this year. And it would have been building up to last year if Marcus Miner didn't come back. If Marcus Miner didn't return in 2022, there's a very good chance Jacoby is the starting left guard in last season. Miner came back. Jacoby just stuck to his role, played that inline tight end stuff, backup guard, and then entered this year as the guy at left guard. And, and we talked all offseason about how it was going to be a three-man battle with Jacoby and Ryan Barron, Branson Taylor on the left side. Now, that obviously changed when the coaches shifted. Uh, coaches shifted. I said shifted the first time. Uh, when the coaches shifted Mack and Salve's over from right tackle to left tackle. But Jacoby was still the, the, the penciled-in starter at left guard um, until this injury. And, and, and it's unfortunate, like I say, I mean, we'll talk about the impact for Pitt and all those kinds of things, but it's just unfortunate when a guy finally has a chance, his years finally come and it's, it's over before it even gets started. You know, it's, 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 it's a shame you, you feel bad for him because he's been working toward this for the last, I mean, never mind his two years at Ohio state, but the last two years at Pitt. And now he's going to spend his fifth year of college, uh, watching from the sidelines, uh, maybe up in the press box, but he can come back next year. And that's a big, that's an important piece of this puzzle because, you know, we thought after 2021, there was going to be a major shift over and you're going to have to go with all these young offensive linemen. It was going to be a restart in 2022. Well, it wasn't because all those guys came back. Carter Warren and Marcus Minor and Owen Drexel and Gabe Hoy came back. So you thought, okay, now you're kicking the can down to 2023. That's going to be the year when all the young players and the transition and all this Except it wasn't because those guys, Warren and Miner and uh, Drexel and Hoy, well, at least Warren, Drexel, and Hoy, got hurt at various points throughout the season, never played a single snap together during the season uh, with the whole group together. And so you ended up getting all this experience for Branson Taylor and, and Mack and Salves and uh, you know, Blake um, Zabovic. And uh, you know, so you end up kicking the can down the road again in 2023 you you know you enter this season with a bunch of experienced guys ready to play against salvies and taylor and cradle and, and Zabovic. you know in addition to jacoby who at least has been in the field a lot well now they're gonna have to replace jacoby um we'll get to his replacement in a second but you know now you're kicking the can down the road to 2024 but you're going to enter next season with you were already going to have ryan bear and branson taylor back um as experienced guys because bear is going to play this year no matter where he is on the depth chart no matter you know whether he starts or not he's going to be on the field a lot this year taylor is probably going to start all season um and now you're going to bring jacoby into that mix as well so another veteran guy who maybe doesn't have as much starting experience but has certainly seen the field a lot and i think should be be able to help you and play really well next year so now you're, you're going into it with three experienced guys um you know, and potentially more depending on, on what happens this season. So for Jacoby's replacement now, you're looking at Jason Collier. And Collier is one of a few guys. And we t I talked to Pat Narduzzi about this during the season, or during training camp, excuse me. One of a few guys who has gotten to this point. And Collier, uh, I believe, was in the recruiting class of 2019. So he's he's a redshirt senior right now. And he's, he's one of these guys who has gotten to this point, redshirt senior, and um, hasn't really played much at all um i mean and and that's not an exaggeration uh just to bring up his bio real quick jason collier in the previous four seasons of his time on the pit football roster played 11 games last year on special teams 13 games the year before on special teams and didn't play at all in 2019 or 2020 so he's played he played 24 games over the last two seasons almost all on special teams maybe probably less than 10 snaps on offense i would say so he's a guy with not a ton of experience a guy who's never really been able to crack the two deep a guy who's never really gotten himself on the field outside of special teams and now here he is in his fifth season walking into a starting job at left guard by all accounts the coaches uh you know have been pretty um, consistent across the board at saying he had a great camp that you know he was really good in training camp and, and there are a few other guys like this deandre jules and nate temple come to mind as, as guys who are fifth year players haven't really done much over the last four years but seem to be headed into their senior seasons playing well playing some of their best football and we'll talk about temple in a second and jules as well but collier's the one that, that is interesting to us now because he's stepping into that starting left guard spot so it seems like your your first team offensive line for the Wofford game, left to right, will be Mack and Salvez, Jason Collier, Jake Cradle, Blake Zabovic, and uh, Branson Taylor. 
Um, there was one other thing I just want to say real quick because I was looking at the media, the, the, the game notes that came out that have the depth chart in them. And, um, They've got a pronunciation guide in here. And this is important because yesterday we talked about Jake McConaughey and uh, it's actually Jake McConaughey. So keep that in mind, Jake McConaughey. Um, in the pronunciation guide, they put the emphasis on the final syllable of Blake Z's final name or last name. <laughs> so I've been saying for five years, I've been six years, seven years, I've been saying Blake Zubovic, but maybe it's Blake Zubovic. No, that would be an emphasis on the first, Z- Zubovic uh zubo zubovic i'm gonna keep with zubovic uh anyway blake zubovic la- uh, of course listed as the uh starting right guard uh, which is where i think you would expect to see him uh and no other real surprises along the offensive line they did include ryan jacoby uh as the starter at, at left guard actually as a co-starter or starter jacoby or collier uh, Pat Narduzzi said that was just uh, basically as a, as a way to acknowledge the good training camp and spring camp that Jacoby had, that he would have been the starter if he was healthy, but since he's not, they have to go with Collier. Hopefully they don't put his name on there anymore because that's confusing for those of us who try to actually use the depth chart or treat it as a uh, legitimate document with some worth and value and tie connection to the real world. But that was the big news that came out of Pat Narduzzi's press conference yesterday. And it's certainly not good news when you lose a player for the full season. Uh, now that depth on the offensive line, which we talked about so much all off season, is going to be tested. All right. Um, other things that stood out here, and, and I think right off the bat, when you you know you, you bring up the page that has the two deep, you start in the upper left corner. You've got quarterback. You've got running back. No real surprises in any of those groups. Although it's interesting that Derek Davis's name shows up as the fourth running back. Last week, uh, Andre Powell was telling us that it was still a battle for the fourth running back job between Davis and freshman Montrevious Lloyd. Lloyd doesn't get the mention here, but a bunch of other freshmen did at wide receiver. Pitt listed uh, three wide receiver spots on the depth chart. Um, Jake McConaughey checking in as the backup behind uh, um, Bub Means at one spot. But behind McConaughey is Lamar Seymour, freshman number one. At the next wide receiver spot, they've got Kanate Mumfield listed as, listed as a starter, which you would expect. Behind him, Zion Fowlerell and Izzy Polk. And then at the third wide receiver spot, they've got Day-Day Reynolds. In the game notes, it says he prefers Day-Day, previously known as Day-John. Uh, but he prefers Day-Day, so we'll go with that. So at the third spot, Dejon Reynolds, Day-Day Reynolds, backed up by Kenny Johnson and Che Wabuko. All four freshman wide receivers are on the depth chart. Can't say too deep because Lamar Seymour and Izzy Polk are listed third, but they're all on the officially released depth chart. And that's got to be some kind of record. Uh, I mean, I'd have to check and see what the most freshmen listed on the depth chart ever, but to have all four players at a position, you know, I mean, to, to have a situation like this, I mean, they list nine wide receivers here. Four of them are freshmen. That's pretty remarkable. That's pretty remarkable. Um, that definitely stood out on that side. Uh, Jake Renda getting a mention there among the tight ends. So they ended up listing four tight ends, but no other real surprises. I don't think uh, on the offense, but it is notable about the four wide receivers. And we talked about it, you know, throughout, I mean, all off season. I think we've talked about how these four, these freshman wide receivers, some of them are going to play at least one, if not two, will burn their red shirts and good chance that numbers three and four could see the field at some point. Well, they all got their names printed on the two deep. So, or on the depth chart, I should say. So that's a pretty good start. And, you know, Kenny Johnson's the guy that I think we're all going to be keeping an eye on, but I can't rule out any of the others because uh, there's some talented wide receivers in that group and they're going to, they're going to get on the field. Um, flipping over to defense, no real surprises. I don't think at uh, defensive end, Dayon Hayes and Nate Temple as the starters, Nakai Johnson and Bam Brima as their uh, backup, Sam Oak and Lola and, and Jimmy Scott third on those lists. Um, you know, Temple again is, is a guy like Collier who really hasn't played much over his time at Pitt. I mean, he's been a, a non-factor and, you know, Pat Narduzzi said, on um yesterday said that you know the biggest thing about nate temple is that he's healthy uh, actually that was a question question what did nate temple do to earn the starting job narduzzi quote he stayed healthy i give him a lot of credit now i didn't know if he could make it through a camp a spring ball and stay healthy but he did we're excited he did 
That's the first win of the year. Nate Temple stayed healthy. We know Nate is a good football player, again, when he's on the team, so no one has really seen Nate Temple. We changed his number from 16 to 6 because he stayed healthy and took that one off his jersey, and we're looking forward to seeing Nate Temple make plays. We're going to find out. Similar comments and remarks, although not quite as... um, uh, not not quite as health related uh, as Temple talking about DeAndre Jules. Um, Narduzzi said, uh, "Quote DeAndre Jules, we took his nine off as well. He was he used to wear ninety, now he's wearing zero. He had a great camp. He's big, he's physical. That's a guy that just keeps getting better. If he has a great year, I could see that guy playing in the NFL. He's big, he's physical, he's got a good pass rush. He's playing at a high level right now. It's going to be a big year for him to show the world really what he's got inside. But he's just a big man. He looks like you're supposed to look." And that, you know, we, we heard that throughout camp. This isn't something new Narduzzi just came up with here on the Monday before the first game, trying to throw off Sean Watson and the Wofford Terriers. And we heard it throughout training camp that, that Jules was playing really well, that Temple was playing really well, that Collier was playing really well. It seems unlikely to me that you would have three of those guys really blossom in their fifth years. But that, I mean, that that's what we're being told. You know, I mean, that's what we're being told by the pit coaches that is, is that it's happening, that these guys in their fifth years are, are truly taking off and playing at a really high level. Pitt's going to need them to. I mean, particularly those guys up front. When you talk about Dayon Hayes and, and Nate Temple and DeAndre Jules and the rest of the tackles, I mean, Hayes is a true senior who I think is still looking for that real breakout season. Temple is a fifth-year senior who is definitely looking for a breakout season. Jules is the same way. And then you have three other sixth-year seniors at defensive tackle and Devin Danielson and David Green and Tyler Bentley. So you've got, I mean, you have, you know, (laughs) Danielson and Green are listed as or starters at one defensive tackle spot. Jules and Bentley are or starters at the other. So if you get those four plus day on Hayes and Nate Temple – You've got six starting defensive linemen who are all seniors. Um, three of them are, you know, super seniors. Two are redshirt seniors, and one is a, a true senior. They're older guys. Um, they're going to need to play well, and you know, and I, I still think. I mean, I think Nikai Johnson's going to be a part of this. I think Sam Okunlola is going to be a part of this. Uh, you know, th- those young guys are going to make contributions, but. The older guys are the ones who who need to step up, and it's going to be interesting to watch Jules and and Temple playing in uh, in in prominent roles. Really, the first time for the first time in uh, each of their careers. Uh, and linebacker, we got a little bit of a switcheroo there. Solomon DeShield spent all of spring and all of training camp working at money linebacker. Bengali Kamara spent all of those things working at star linebacker. Now they're on the depth chart, flipped around. DeShield's at star, which. The star linebacker is that field, the wide side of the field. You know, if you line up on the hash, he's, he's on the wide side of the field. Kamara is that money is playing that money linebacker, or listed at the money linebacker, which is the short side of the field. Panarduzzi explained it, at first. Honestly, I thought it was a typo. I, I thought, oh, geez, they screwed this up. What a bunch of goofballs. But Narduzzi actually said, no, they like Kamara at the um, money linebacker spot because he's more physical and, you know, he's a good blitzer. And he's, you know, more physical than Solomon DeShields. DeShields is a really good athlete. They're both good athletes. Um, they both kind of project well at both spots, but Kamara being a little more physical might make him more of a weapon at the money linebacker spot. And that'll help with the various predictions I've made about how many sacks and tackles for loss he's going to make this season and force fumbles and interceptions and all of that. We'll see how they actually play. We'll see uh, how how they how they end up lining up, um, whether Kamara mostly plays star or money or whether you know which one does Shields uh, does Shields mostly plays. I I still think we're going to see Kamara outside at star, but maybe he plays the money. Um, interesting to note there, Braylon Lovelace is the listed backup for uh, Kamara at at money linebacker. It's actually Lovelace or Nick Lappy. Lappy. Um, a walk-on linebacker who went on scholarship last week. So, oh, and Kyle Lewis, a redshirt freshman listed as the backup at star linebacker. So that's going to be interesting to see if those young players, Lovelace and Lewis in particular, not to mention Jordan Bass and Rasheem Biles, end up um, getting on the field. I mean, I think they're going to have a rotation. They're going to have some of these guys get playing time. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much. And then the other rotation we expect at safety, Javon McIntyre and PJ O'Brien listed starters at the two safety spots, Donovan McMillan and Steph Hall, their backups respectively. 
I think you're going to see a lot of rotation there. I don't think you're going to see a case like we've seen the past couple years where two safeties play like 95% of the snaps or whatever. I think you'll see more rotation. I think you'll see McMillan on the field. I think you'll see Hall on the field. And obviously you'll see McIntyre and O'Brien playing a lot. And the last thing we got to, well, not the last thing. We have two things left. Um, Cornerback. Marquez Williams or A.J. Woods at one of those starting spots. I can't believe they put Marquez with an or. It's almost got to be a joke at this point. Like I mean, like the, the most disrespected player on the team, and you won't even list them as a starter. <laughs> He's got to be an or starter. Uh, cracks me up. You know he noticed it. You know he had something to say. Uh, the other thing, too, uh, worth noting, just in terms of roster management, Jeff Yark, the punter, who transferred in from Elon this offseason, is no longer on the team. He transferred in January, came here with a few years of eligibility remaining, battled with Caleb Junko for the starting job. Last week, they announced that Junko had won the starting job and won the scholarship. Panaruzzi emphasized multiple times we're still going to have that competition going on throughout the course of the season. Jeff Yerk won't be part of it. I'm a little surprised. I thought Yerk would stick it out and battle for the starting job, but uh, he chose not to and uh, decided to be... uh, I don't know what he's going to do. I haven't seen any announcement that he's going in the uh, transfer portal. If it happened, if it came out after we released this or after we recorded, I apologize. But uh, he's not on Pitt's roster anymore. So Cam Guest, the local kid from Bell Vernon, will be the backup. Caleb Junko will be your uh, starting punter. So that was the two deep. That was uh, Pat Narduzzi's comments. We'll do this every Tuesday. Just kind of recap the depth chart if there's any notable changes or anything like that. And also, we'll recap everything from Pat Narduzzi's um monday press conference so we'll do that every uh tuesday we'll get into a rhythm here with the season of what days what we talk about on each day but we appreciate you tuning in today for sure make sure you like this video and subscribe to the youtube channel youtube.com slash pantherlair.com the most comprehensive uh source of pit sports news on the internet is pantherlair.com and i'm chris peak hoping your week got off to a great start yesterday and hope you have a great tuesday today so thanks for tuning in we appreciate it like this video and subscribe and we will catch up with you tomorrow for the morning pit youtube.com slash pantherlair.com